Hi everyone, welcome to AWS Data Engineers Training Program. And today's topic is VPC, which stands for Virtual Private Cloud. So VPC is a technical term provided by AWS. In simple words, you can call it as like networking part. Because when you have multiple servers, when you have uh, like uh, different type of other services which are interacting with each other, so for their interaction, networking is also required. So we'll be starting the class with the agenda. So the agenda is overview of VPC service. We'll talk about CIDR range, subnets, route tables, internet gateway, network ACL, and security groups. So let's start with the overview so every aws account has a vpc and that comes by default when you create your trial account so vpc as the name indicates virtual private cloud that means whenever you are creating a trial account aws is providing you a private cloud that means aws is providing you a range of private ip addresses and that range is decided or you can say defined by this number this is known as cider range so 172.31.0.0 slash 16 this is the cider range for your vpc now you may be thinking like what does that mean 172.31.0.0 that looks like an ip address right slash 16 does it mean that we will get a range of 16 ip addresses no it's not like that there is a different formula to calculate the number of available IPs in this range and how to calculate that, that we will be uh, exploring in coming slides. So let me open my AWS console and so that I can show you all these things practically. So I need to log in first. Let me put MFA code. Three, two, six, four, one, six. Okay, so once you have logged in into your uh, AWS console, you have to search with VPC. And you can see this tagline, isolated cloud resources. As I said, right, you will be assigned with a private IP address ranges, which will not be accessible from outside or from the uh, outside world, you can say. That means your resources, your EC2 instance or all these things, they will be like, very secure but at the same time they will give you the flexibility to allocate the public ip address as well if you remember when we launched ec2 instance there was a public ip address attached and there was a private ip address attached so the public one right that will help you to connect to your server from outside but in case there is any specific requirement that you don't want the people from outer world to connect to your server in that case you can skip i mean i will show you the settings shortly like in that case only private ip address will be associated with your server so let me open this and we'll talk about different features in vpc So you can see this one there is a vpc already available and as i said right this comes along with when you create your aws account you don't need to create it separately one vpc will come by default 
but after that if you want to create more you can click on create vpc and you can create as many vpcs as you want but as of now for our training purpose for our learning purpose this one vpc should be more than sufficient so you can see that there is no name given for this vpc that is fine if you want to give some name you can you can click on edit button and you can give some name every vpc has a unique vpc id as you can see here the current state is available this is the ip address cider this is ip address range and how many ip address is available under this range that we will explore in some time and after that there are few more things like route table is there network acl is there i will explain like what does this means and default vpc yes because when you are creating more vpcs those will not be default there will be only one default vpc and owner id that's nothing but like my aws account number so these are the details available for your particular vpc and now we will be talking about cider range so if you come down cider range right yeah so this is the range and how to calculate like how many ip addresses are available under this one i will explain that you can see this one and you can see this one also that will give you more clarity so when your cider range is ending with slash 32 in that case the ip address available is only one two raised to power zero when the ip address range is i mean cider range is slash 31 it will be two raised to power one that means two then this number will keep on decreasing as you can see on the left side and this will keep on increasing 2 raised to power 2 then 2 raised to power 3 4 5 6 7 8 so basically it will go like 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 like that if i talk about slash 16 right it allows 65,536 IPs as I said right slash 16 does not mean that it says 16 IP addresses basically it is 65,536 IP addresses that's very big range definitely for our training purpose we won't be launching these many servers but this these many IP addresses available for your use Okay, so in case you are having any doubt till this cider range concept, you can ask me. Otherwise, we'll be moving to the next slide. Okay, seems like there is no doubt. So we'll be moving to the next slide. The next one is VPC subnet and availability zones. So every AWS account has a big IP address ranges and out of that big IP address range we will split that into multiple smaller parts which is known as subnets and you can see here 172.31.0.0 slash 16 that is our entire VPC range. Now we are splitting that range into multiple smaller ranges. You can understand like a there is a country and inside that country there are different states same same similar concept is there so you can see that the first subnet the range is 172.31.0.0/24 as you know this number more smaller this number is the bigger range will be there so this slash 16 is a bigger range and slash 24 is a lower range Let's see like how many IP addresses are there in 24. 24 is not uh, this one. Yeah. 
24 range means 256 IP addresses and slash 16 means 65,536 IP ranges. So as of now, in the current in this slide, right, you can see that three different subnets are there, and the range is for this first one, this is the range, second one, this is the range, and third one, this is the range. And these three subnets are for three different availability zones. You can see that EU West 1. A, EU West 1B and EU West 1C. So EU West 1 is the region. This is known as AWS region. And then A, B and C are three different availability zones. So just like your AWS account comes with VPC defined, similarly few subnets will be already defined. But if you want to create more subnets, you can even do that. So when you are launching any server, you will get an option to choose your subnet. You will say that I would like to launch my server in EU West 1B. So it will be launched in this particular region, this particular availability zone and the IP address associated with your server will be from this range. This is the entire range consists of 256 IP addresses out of which one IP address will be associated with your server. So I, let me show you the subnets on our account. So on the left side, when you open this VPC console, on the left side, we talked about VPCs and now click on subnets and you will get subnet details. You can see now. This, these are the subnet IDs. The status is available and these subnets are under this VPC. And you can see that VPC ID is same because we have only one VPC ID and uh, under that there are multiple subnets we are creating.